Okay, hey guys, um, this is Shelby, and I am going to call this um, Shelby's Book Club for Health Assessment because um, it's technically um, not me reading off of the PowerPoints, it's me reading off of the book and just connecting them to the PowerPoints. Let's start off from the beginning. Um, so, uh, the head... Um, hair, scalp, skull, face, skin. Um, so I'm just going to read the anatomy in, well, I guess just, this is just stuff on the head. I'm going to go down one. So know your anatomy. Um, so um, basically, um, the head is a skull knee, the head is a bony structure that protects the brain and upper spinal cord. Um, it specials the, in the senses of vision, hearing, smell, and taste. Um, there's 40 different bones. Um, and the facial muscles are innervated by the trigeminal and um, facial um, nerve. Um, yeah. So the eyes, um, we have ocular eyes. Um, the external eye is upper and lower lid, eyelashes, conjunctiva, lacrimal glands, eyebrows. The opening of the eyelid is termed the palpebra, palpebra fissure. <laughs> conjunctiva lie um, in between the eyelid and the eyeball, um, and um, peripheral conjunctiva lies in the eyelids and contains blood vessels, nerves, hair follicles, and sebaceous glands. Hmm. Um, the lacrimal puncta um, drains the tears from the eyeballs um, through the lacrimal so sac of the lacrimal ducts. Ocular structure, um, the globe is the eyeball. It's separated into three, sclera, uvea, uvea, and retina. Sclera is the tough um, white of the eye. Um, and the globe is termed the limbus. The transparent avascular, um, richly innervated with sensory nerves is via the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve, um, which is cranial nerve five. Um, yeah, so that is the cornea of the iris in the pupil um, is that the middle term is termed the uvea it has the ciliary body iris it's highly vascular vascular supplies um, the cell the um, eye with uh, nutrition um, the iris is responsible for dilation and constriction through cranial nerve three um, the ciliary body adjusts the shape of the lens to accommodate for distance um, and produces aqueous humor um, to maintain intraocular pressure the inner layer of the eye is the retina, and it's the extension of the nervous system. It contains rods and cones and photoreceptors. Um, the macula lutea is the pigmented area. The fovea centralis is a small um, depression, um, which is the greatest um, focal point, um, but it, it only contains cones, no rods. Um, and the macula lutea is um, pretty much rods. Um, so that um, the optic the optic disc is cranial nerve number two. And um, if we're thinking about cranial nerves, think of the term ooh 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 to touch a girl's vagina makes um, wait gets Vern Vern. Vern gets a hard on. 
Yeah, Vern gets a hard on. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Ooh, 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 to touch a girl's, a female's vagina gives Vern a hard on. Okay, yeah, so that's how it goes. <laughs> and you can go off of that. That's from 1 um, to 12. Um, and they line up that way. The strangest um, mnemonic, but um, that is uh, what my anatomy teacher gave me. Um, the six ocular muscles um, and three cranial nerves. Um, oh, wait. Uh, Ocular function um, is for vision, um, occurs in the eyes when rods and cones in the retina give image um, in response to light stimuli. It's constantly adjusting and focusing and the optic nerve and optic tap track reach the visual cortex. Um, there's three, there or there's six um, extraocular muscles and three cranial nerves in this eye department. The inferior oblique is guided by um, number three. Um, the oblique muscle controls lower medial movement innervated by the trochlear. So um, is innervated by the trochlear nerve and uh, hmm. yeah, yeah, uh, of cranial um, nerve number four, um, lateral rectus uh, controls lateral eye movements, and um, that's the ducens nerve, cranial number four, uh, six. Um, the ear has uh, the etricle, the um, so the pina and the external auditory canal. The helix is the um, concha. Is the, um, so like what you guys pierce, um, like the the little spoon shape thing sometimes. And the tragus is what you pierce. <laughs> um, the auricle uh, um, focuses the sound waves um, into the ear. Um, the tympanic membrane is a uh, eardrum, has hair follicles, and secretes earwax for um, antimicrobial protection. Uh, the middle ear is air-filled cavity space um, from the external ear to the tympanic membrane. Um, yep, and within the, um, uh, the inner ear, we have ossicles that, um, the tympanic membrane vibrates due to sound waves, and they move the ossicles, which, um, go through the organ of cordy, and uh, we, we hear stuff from that point. Um, Semicircular canals in cochlea. Um, so vestibule and semicircular canals um, are responsible for balance in um, cochlea. Contains or organ of cordy that um, is important in hearing sounds through the auditory nerve, um, cranial nerve number eight. Um, uh, inspired and in the nose inspired expires, humidifies, filters, warms air, um, identifies odor, gives sound, lingual sounds. Um, it's encased in bone and the lower two thirds is cartilage. Uh, the cavities are highly vascular, um, traps airborne particles and prevents it re from reaching the, um, the lungs. Um, also, yeah, um, it drains to get um, mucus out, and yep, um, pretty much it. You can you just use common sense on that one. Um, now the mouth and oropharynx. Mouth has tongue, teeth, gums, salivary glands, hard palate, soft palate, pharynx. Um, it's used for taste. Um, 
we have 32 different um, permanent teeth, um, and we have baby teeth, and then permanent teeth. Uh, the parotid glands are light anterior to the ear, submandibular glands are tucked under the mandible, and submand uh, oh, something Wharton ducts. Gosh, and sublingual glands are under the tongue. Um, the oropharynx is the back of the mouth. Um, the, it has the uvula, pillars, tonsils, um, all that good stuff. Um, and then the epiglottis uh, protects the um, laryngeal opening so um, food it doesn't get trapped in your airway. Um, the neck. We have muscle, hyoid bone, larynx, trachea, esophagus, cervical spine, lymph nodes. Um, atomical landmarks are called triangles. Um, the hyoid bone is U-shaped bone at the base of the mandible. Um, larynx is also known as the voice box um, and is also called the Adam's apple. It's tough. Um, protrudes, especially in males. Thyroid um, is responsible for releasing thyroid hormones. Um, yep, and you will go over how to um, look at that. Jugular veins lie deep on the neck. There's carotid pulse. Um, yeah, uh, so um, and then lymph nodes are, you have superficial that you can fill um, through the skin and deep, which um, are not um, able to be inspected. Um, yep, okay. And um, so general health history um, for status, have you noticed any changes? Um, do you have any chronic conditions or infections of your eyes, ears, nose, mouth? Um, do you take any medication? How often? Injury to these areas, um, problems related to injury, surgery, um, history and family. Um, is anyone impacted in your family of these um, conditions? Of these areas, uh, your your last routine examinations, um, uh, your daily practices, your occupational and recreational risks. Um, do you smoke? Do you drink alcohol? Um, problem based history: Have you had headaches? How long? What's the pattern? What's the pain feel like? Is it severe? Zero to ten symptoms um, with headaches, factors that trigger headaches, what relieves it, um, dizziness, um, sensation of dizziness, um, how do you treat it? Um, did with loss of vision, did it happen suddenly, gradually? Did it just come and go? What symptoms are you experiencing? Is What makes your vision worse or better? Um, does it interfere with your daily life, with hearing loss? How long have you been trouble of hearing? Did it happen suddenly or gradually? Um, what other symptoms have you noticed with hearing loss? Does it bother you? Um, do you have tintiness, ringing, buzzing, crackling in your ears. Um, does it come and go or is it all the time? Um, with earache, how, earache, how long? The location, is it constant? Um, do you pull on your ear? Does the pain change with position? What does the pain feel like? Um, is there discharge? Nasal, um, discharge, bleeding. Um, what other symptoms? How do you treat it? Sore throat, how long? Does it hurt to swallow? Burning, scratchy. Um, do you in, have you inhaled dust or fumes at work? Um, fever, cough, painful lymph nodes, treating a sore throat. Um, how have you, how has it been affected on your home treatments? Um, Mouth sores, how long does it bother with eating and talking? Okay, so those are all questions you can ask with these factors. Um, okay, 
and I would go over the risk factors um, in the book. So we have risk factors for cataracts, um, increases with um, age, of course, more in women, Africans, people who smoke, chronic drinkers, um, UV light exposure, um, cortico taking corticosteroid meds, diabetes mellitus, glaucoma, um, age is usually over 50, um, they have a history in their family, again, African Americans, take corticosteroids, have diabetes mellitus, um, for oropharyngeal cancer, it's usually after 40, um, Males, it's a two to one male ratio. African Americans, 90% um, is from uh, um, can oral cancers from tobacco use, um, 70 to 80 from alcohol. Exposure to sunlight is only 30. Um, history from previous diagnosed risk and immunosuppression increases, increases risk. Um, so for hearing, um, you want to wear hearing protection, limit exposure of high volume, and be aware of and minimize noise. Okay. Um, so routine techniques, look the head, shape, size, normal cephalic. Is the skull symmetric proportion to size of body? Um, inspect the scalp, lesions, redness, flake. Purport, um, again, with the face, is it proportional? Is it calm? Is there lesions, edema, facial hair, age, gender? Microcephaly is abnormally small, um, asymmetric. Um, you should really note that. Is the pigmentation okay? Um, uh, is there signs of stress, anxiety? Okay. Um, head. If is there a regularity of normal or reported pain, palpate um, in a gentle motion with gloves, lesions, injury, poor hygiene, it should be symmetrical, firm, without tender, and um, note if any prominence are felt. Um, palpate face and jaws. Again, um, is there jaw clicking? Is there pain? Irregularity. Um, ask the patient to slowly open mouth, um, enclose it, and move it side to side. Um, temporal, report headache, pain, um, uh, use fingertips, and um, arteries should be smooth and non-tender with pulsation. Um, note for any lumps, protrusions, um, tenderness, uh, limited movement, clicks in jaws, um, edema, redness, um, low pitch blowing sound. Um, yeah. Okay. So the Snellen chart is um, we do in a well lit room. They have to stand 20 feet away. Um, wear contacts, lenses, or glasses if they need them. Um, cover with one eye and document the line the patient can read. Note the perception. Um, have them distinct between the red and green color perceptions. Um, uh, use E for those who cannot read so they can just point the directions of the E. Um, 20 to 30 means that um, the patient can read at 20 feet. The pa so patient um, at 20 feet can read what a normal person at 30 feet is. So if the second number is bigger, that's not good. That means you have um, um, bad vision. So you want the, the, de the, de the denominator number to be lower or 20. Um, test visual act. Acuity. Um, so people over 40 who think they have difficulty reading, cover one eye, use Rogenberg card or newspaper, about 14 inches, read the smallest line, repeat with the other line, read lines. Some people are very embarrassed about this. Oh, I'm talking about the Snellen chart now. 
So some people are very embarrassed about this, so they'll try to memorize it. Um, so that's why you have them read it backwards. Um, face uh, the patient two to three feet have a, um, to test peripheral vision. So you're going to grab a pen, have them face you, and take the pen out of your peripherals, go up and down, um, and note if they're seeing um, the pen coming within the peripheral visions the same time as you go side to side. Um, pretty easy. Um, they should see um, at the same time as you, which is normal, is 50 superior, 70 degrees inferior, um, 90 degrees temporal, and 60 degrees nasally. Um, presbyopia is loss of elasticity in lens um, from being older. Um, yep, uh, you should know any hesitating, squinting, um, leaning forward, blinking, facial expressions. Um, all right, and um, yeah. Skin should be intact, so for inspecting eyebrows and eyelashes, it should be intact, symmetric, um, eyelashes shouldn't be curled inward, eyelid margins should be pink, fit, flush, um, when they blink they should fully cover, the lower lid should cover below the limbus, the um, upper lid should cover part of the iris but not the pupil. Um, blinking, um, involuntary movements, um, note, um, that the, the average is 15 to 20 blinks per minute. Um, flakiness of eyebrows, lashes, unequal alignment, asymmetry, um, ptosis is when part of the eye is covering the pupil, um, solera is... Solera is visible between the upper lid. That is hyperthyroid exophthalmus, so it almost looks like they're, the eye is protruding out. Um, closure of lid that is incomplete and occur with pain or difficulty may um, result in infection or edema of the lids. Nodules flaking crustiness, tearing, or uh, discharge should be noted. Um, if uh, deformity in lid and lashing, lashes is called an ophthalmus, so it's curling in. Um, okay. So Asians normally have upward slants. Caucasians um, don't. Um, eyeball does not protrude. Um, so you know there's as an, as, uh, according to race there's different um, there's different types in, of eyes, <laughs> as I sh as you should say. Um, so you're going to want to inspect the sclera, have them look up, down, pull up the upper lid at, and the lower lid at the same time, and then just the lower lid and have them look up. Note if there's any redness, drainage, um, conjunctivitis, um, hemorrhage. Um, it should be the bulbar conjunctiva should be pink, clear, tiny red vessels um, with tiny red vessels. So that is like the little pad um, within your eye when you pull your lower lid down. Inspect the um, corneal light reflex. So um, the pen light should shine back out um, symmetrically and um, yeah. It should be clear and white. Um, it sh it shouldn't be blurry because that could be a sign of cataracts. Um, no, any asymmetry, weak muscles, um, yellow solera could be sign of jaundice or liver disease. Um, redness, inflammation, hemorrhage, blue tones, um, may be caused by osteogenesis imperfecta. Um, inspect the cornea for transparency, um, so, um, 
slowly move the light over reflection of the cornea. It should be clear and shiny. Inspect iris for color. Um, inspect the pupil dilation. Um, it, it's normally between two and six millimeters um, in response. So the perola is pupils are equal and round and react to light and accommodation. So that's the perola. Um, uh, opaque rings encircling the limbus is corneal arcus. Um, normally, patients over 60 year old have hyperlipidemia. Um, this is the corneal arcus is seen in those that have hyperlipidemia. Um, patients who have iridectomy or iridotomy to correct uh, glaucoma usually have a section of the iris missing. Um, columba is a congenital defect in the iris. Um, blunt force trauma can cause um, iridialysis, um, tearing of iris from the solera. Um, pupillary abnormalities, um, either failure to constrict with light, um, it can be dysfunction in the um, cranial number two, cranial nerve number two. Meiosis is when um, the pupils are less than two millimeters. Um, yeah, can um, eye drops can be given, mito mitotic eye drops, something like that. Okay, moving on. <laughs> um, Mydrasis um, is pupillary dilation. So Mydriasis, um, so it, it can be um, atropine eye drops, atropine eye drops, um, midbrain lesions, hypoxia, um, cranial nerve number three damage, um, gl uh, acute glaucoma. Um, anascoria is um, unequal. Um, size of pupils and it can be congenital or um, due to pathway destruction of parasympathetic pupillaries, um, eye medications, amblyopia, unilater unilateral sympathetic pathway destructions um, to assess um, the eye. Um, you can use corneal light reflex um, 10 to 12 inches from the patient's nose. Keep the head still. Have the eyes follow your finger. Move object away from its center position to the upper outer extreme, lower inner extreme. Um, move, hold it there. Move, slowly move from na temporal to nasal. Um, upper and outer, lower and inner. Stop in each position, let them gaze. Um, mild nystigmus, um, you'll see an extreme lateral gaze. Um, nystigmus is um, involuntary eye movements, so they their eyes kind of bounce. Um, okay. Um, light reflexes should be asymmetric, so cover one eye um, and with an opaque card, the eye should not move. Um, okay, so you're going to cover and uncover with a card. Um, it shouldn't move, so it shouldn't focus on the card when it's um, being taken away. Palpate. Um, the eyelids, so see um, if there's pressure, they should be moist. You know, if there's increased pressure, it could be, insinuate glaucoma. Um, 
um, inspect the eyelids, corneal reflex. Um, so number, um, corneal reflex number seven should create a blink and um, corneal number five um, as well should cause a blink. Huh. Um, interior chamber of transparency, iris surface, chamber depth, um, just know if it's clear and you can, you know, go off of that. Cloudiness, um, iris should not bulge out. Um, yeah, equal, the pupil sizes should be equal. Um, uh, if there is edema or impairment in cranial nerves, um, there will be a sign in the eyeballs. Um, there will that would be like a sign of he cerebral hemorrhage or tumors. Note um, when inspecting the eyelids if there's any lesions or foreign bodies. Um, intraocular structures. Darken room, see if the pupils dilate, um, move glasses, examine the right eye of, um, examine the right eye and the left eye, look for myopia or hyperopia. So myopia is nearsightedness, hyperopia is farsightedness. Um, have them look above your shoulder, you know, look, look, look at that stuff. Um, there should be a red reflex um, over the the um, patient's pupil um, by the light illuminating the retina. Um, yeah. Decrease or irregularity um, in the red reflex um, could be a cause by hemorrhage or vi by the vitreous humor. Um, through like glaucoma, cataracts prevent eye inspection of optic disc. Um, so yeah, th it should show the back of the eyes. Um, it should be creamy, yellow, pink. Um, there will be a small de depression, um, fovea centralis, and the optic disc and the macula macula and um, red blood cells um, arteries to veins should be two to three or four to five um, so there should be that many um, arteries to veins when looking at um, that uh, inspect the colors make sure it's good um, blurred Vision may uh, be caused by increased intracranial pressure, irregular disc or disc size or shape um, should be noted. Impaired blood flow to may cause the disc to appear wider. Um, hyperemic discs in, are engorged or um, torturous vessels on the surface are abnormal. Depression in the physio cup um, should not extend to the border of the disc and should not occupy one half of the um, diameter of the disc. Um, appearance should not differ between eyes. Um, um, arteries are narrow. Extremely narrow arteries are abnormal, and um, yeah, pale pale fundus, um, and either generalized or uh, yeah, just just make sure it's all good. <laughs> oh gosh, more eyes. Um, uh, so we look at. Disc diameter in macula, assess for hearing, um, see if they can hear you, do the whisper test, um, the finger rub test, um, see if they can hear you, inspect the alignment of ears, where they are, they should be kind of li lined up, the top should line up with your eyes. Um, 
yeah, ears should be about 4 to 10 centimeters in length. Um, no discharge should have, you know, there's the Darwin tabercle is the normal deviation at top of helix that are on some people. Drusen bodies are deposits um, that are often made in macular degeneration um, within the eye. Um, hearing loss, ask them if they're constantly asking you to repeat um, questions they can't hear. Um, that's sign of hearing loss. Low set ears, um, ears that are misaligned more than 10 degrees um, are abnormal. Um, low set ears are seen in Down syndrome. Smaller than four are micro otia, and larger is macro otia, larger than 10 centimeters. Okay. Now moving on to abnormal findings of the ear. Um, if it's uh, bloody or you're getting clear discharge, it can be sign of head, in head injury or skull fracture um, or infection. So um, thickened, disfigured, utricle would be cauliflower ear. If ear um, appears like it has progressive ulcer, ulcer or a patch of crusty skin, um, waxy bump or flat lesion, it could be probably carcinoma. Um, hematoma, um, if there's direct trauma, contact sport like wrestling or so, um, that would call us a hematoma. Um, sebaceous cysts, some of us get these big ass pimples under our ears. I've had one before. So palpate the ears, make sure it's flexible, um, no pain. Um, yep. So look in the ear, um, yeah, with uh, babies, you pull um, downward, with um, adults, you pull the oracle up, um, use an otoscope to look um, at the walls of the canal. <sighs> We're going to make it through this, y'all. I'm just so tired. <laughs> um, there should be no dryness, flakiness, excessive discharge, redness, odor, none of that. Um, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Um, arrhythmia and edema can be signs of infection. Um, yeah, so it's not good. Okay, um, okay, so, uh, continue looking through the lens and visualize the tympanic membrane. Um, most, um, a taut tympanic membrane is pars tensa, less taut is pars flaccida, and dense ring around is uh, the membrane is an annulus. Um, part of malleus and incus can be seen through um, the tympanic membrane. Um, so um, abnormal appearances um, could be. Um, Serous fluid in the middle ear, otis media, otitis media, infection of middle ear, um, acute purulent otis media with redness, chalky white otis media, infection blue or deep red behind um, tympanic membrane is um, injury, red streaks is vascularization caused by allergy, dullness. Um, repeated effect infections in white flakes um, and plaques is the healed inflammation of the tympanic membrane. Again, do the whisper, the rubbing fingers, um, have them where they can't read your lips. Oh, my son woke up.
Okay, I'm back again. Um, so you can use the Weber test, which um, uses tuning forks in striking the fork um, against the base of the palm and placing it on the midline, and um, it should vibrate um, the skull. And sometimes one is um, if there's more hearing in one sound. Um, like if one is louder, that means that um, there there's an affected ear on one side. Okay. Um. Okay. Rhine test um, also includes tuning forks, um, and so activate tuning fork. Hold it by the base stem, strike the fork against the palm of your hand, and place it on the mastoid process um, with second hand time in seconds. Have patient tell you the tone um, when tone can't be heard no longer. Um, quickly remove fork and invert fork and hold the vibrating against the ear. Um, begin timing. The patient should be able to hear the tone. Um, with in, instruct to tell you the vibration when vibrations no longer heard. Um, no long when patient no longer he, note the seconds it's no longer heard. Um, the tone of the front ear should be twice as long twice as long as the tone heard in the back. Um, yeah, and you can repeat this on the other ear. So, um, AC should be greater than BC, um, so conductive hearing loss could be the reason why BC is um, longer than AC. Uh, audio scope can measure hearing loss, um, so delivers tones and frequencies. Um, indicate if the tone can be heard. Um, yep. Um, so they often use this on like babies because they can't hear, so they'll put an audio scope on them. Um, loss in high frequency results in difficulty hearing. Um, and that's 20 dB. 40 dB is loss in all frequencies. Um, nose should not have uh, no edema, lesions, arrhythmia, symmetric, no flaring or narrowed. Mark asymmetry, um, discharge, watery un unilateral. Um, so yeah, all that stuff palpate nose. Um, there should be noiseless air should go in, um, not be tender, um, no, nothing should occlude the nostrils. Um, inspect for lesions, arrhythmia, discharge, report pain, um, speculate the septum, uh, nearing of nostrils, um, when patient inhales may be associated with chronic obstruction, noisy obstruction, um, maybe congestion, trauma to nasal passage, allergies, instability or tenderness, trauma, inflammation may be noted with palpation. Um, drugs can cause septum deviation. Um, so just... So we're on nose. Um, no, uh, have pay the head erect when looking in the nose. Um, yeah, so just look in there, make sure it doesn't have pain and whatnot. Um, frontal sinuses, check them, no tenderness or pain. Um, uh, transilluminate. 
So there's paranasal, so across from the nose. Transilluminate is like um, by the eyebrows, so check those sinus areas as well. Again, no pain or redness. Um, mouth, symmetry, again, lips should be pink. Um, there should not be blue because that'd be cyanosis. Cracks in arrhythmia could be vitamin D deficiency. Um, edema could be allergic reaction. Macoclusion is disalignment of teeth. Protrusion of lower jaw is prognathism. Um, note gingivitis, hormonal changes, um, signs of drugs, um, aging, um, gingival disease, gum disease. Um, teeth should be white, yellow, or grayish. Um, some may be broken loose or misaligning. Um, the gum should be pink and moist appearance. Mm -hmm. um, um, have the patient stick out their tongue. This can test um, the 12th hypoglossial nerve and um, it should be smooth and symmetric and pink and moist and glistening. Atrophy, um, maybe neurological disorder. Beefy red could be vitamin B deficiency, geographic tongue. Um, hairy tongue can be due to infection, antibiotic therapy, or pipe smoking. Down syndrome um, or hypothyroidism can cause big tongue and sores and lesions. Mm, my gosh, this chapter goes forever. Um, so just have them open their mouth and look at the back. Basically, make sure um, abnormal findings are aphanous ulcers, um, which have um, round white oval ulcerative with a red halo. Leukoplakia have a white patch on the oral. Arrhythmioplakia have red patch. Um, salivary blockage, um, stress dehydration, acetone order, Odor can have, be diabetic ketoacidosis. Fetid order could be um, poor dental care, um, sinus problems. Um, yeah, so use the tongue blade and look back there. It should be pink and all good. Um, palpate the uvula and tonsils for texture. Um, uh, say ah, this will test um, the vagus nerve, um, and um, tickle the uvula if they gag. This will be um, um oh so um if if the soft palate rises, um that would test the cranial ten. So if you gag. You um, could taste the vagus nerve. Um, oh, wait, no, saying ah would be vagus, gagging would be glosso. Um, yeah, hold it up and down, just look and make sure all the coloring is right. Um, lesions could be cap pulsi, sarcoma. Um, Failure of soft palate to rise could be a neurological problem. Post-nasal drip or could, um, 
mucoid film could be post-nasal drip or infection, allergies, diphtheria could give the membrane a grayish tinge. Um, exudate edema of tonsils, arrhythmias. Um, tonsils could be sign of infection. Um, teeth, gums, and lips report lesions and pain. Teeth should be firmly anchored. Palpate um, tongue for texture. Um, so grafts the tongue, note any lumps, nodules, thickening, if it's smooth, even, rough, um, note that. Mark any movement of teeth or lumps and nodules. Um, so, so inspecting the neck, neck should be centered, um, trapezius and sterno, um, mascloid should be bilateral. Um, notice any lumps, masses, um, and presences. Um, if you have a goiter, you would notice that is fullness in the neck. Um, tracheal deviation could cause displacement of mass. Um, note any tremors of head and neck. Um, estimate range of motion, have them move side to side, up, down, um, should be painless and controlled. Um, palpate neck and trachea, um, the rings, the cartilage, the thyroid, um, um, have them um, shrug their shoulders against your hands. This will test for accessory nerve. Um, palpate the neck muscles to see if there's tenderness. Palpate the thyroid gland. Um, so you can do it posterior or anterior, um, but put your thumbs or your finger pads um, on each side of the trachea and um, have them swallow and you'll feel that little thyroid bump past your um, finger pads. Um, thyroid should be um, palpable, um, yep, and um, brute can indicate um, large volumes of blood, lumps, tenderness are abnormal, um, note any spasms, weakness, unilateral, bilateral, muscular weakness, um, abnormalities, um, yeah, tremors. Um, palpate lips, lymphs um, up to down. Um, make sure they're equal. Um, sometimes make sure they're um, non-tender, soft, and mobile. If lymph nodes are enlarged, firm, and tender, it could be infection. Um, if they're hard and fixed, and asymmetric and non-tender, it could be a sign of malignancy. Um, okay. So, um, migraine headache is, um, oh, my son woke up again. <laughs> and he's back asleep. <laughs> so, migraine headache is the most common. Um, it's in young. Um, it's vasospasms, um, may be accompanied by depression, restlessness, irritability, um, photophobia, so sensitivity, light, nausea, vomiting, cluster headache is painful, primary headaches, um, excruciating pain for 30 minutes on unilateral could last six to 12 weeks, burning, boring, stabbing, pain behind one eye, could cause unilateral ptosis, incipilateral lacrimination, nasal stiffness, and drainage, slight nausea.
Bye bye. Uh oh. Hey guys, um, I am back. Um, last night my it was like late at night and uh, my son was waking up because he is um sick and has a cough just like me. Um, so yeah, I I just decided to um to take a break last night and now it is early morning and I am back. Um, so we left off on headaches. So migraine headache is the second most common. It's um, in young women and is most susceptible. Um, can have depression, irritability, photophobia, nausea. Cluster headache is in a specific area, excruciating pain for 30 minutes to an hour. It can repeat daily from 6 to 12 weeks. Um, it's boring, stabbing, burning behind one eye. Um, it can cause ptosis on one side. Um, yeah, so now we have tension headache. That is the most common. Um, it's from 20 to 40 years old. Um, the frontal, temporal, parietal, and occipital areas um, um, be, if, become confined and um, is very gradual um, over several days. And the contraction of skeletal muscles um, of the uh, face and jaw and neck can um, stimulate it. Um, this this tension headache feels like a tight band around your head. Um, okay. Um, Post traumatic headache. Uh, so <coughs> it's that general dull head pain um, that's secondary to a head injury. Um, you can have giddiness, dizziness, lack of ability to concentrate. Hydrocephalus um, is the accumulation of cerebral fluid um, in the head. Um, <coughs> sorry, I'm like coughing like no other. <sighs> Had to get a drink of water. Um, so it's accumulation of C, um, cerebral spinal fluid. <clears throat> it can be an obstruction in drainage or um, obstruction in being able to reabsorb. Um, this causes an increase of intracranial pressure um, leading to the actual enlargement of the head. <clears throat> and also, guys, um, these slides most often time aren't going in with, um, they're not following with what I'm reading. Um, that's just because um, the book has more than these slides do. <coughs> okay, moving on to eye, abnormal eyes. Um, we have chalzion, which is a nodule in the meobian gland of the eyelid. It's tender infected. Um, Hordlium can follow. It's chronic inflammation, such as conjunctiva, blepharitis, me meobian cyst. It's firm, hard, um, firm, non tender nodule, and um, it's observed on the eyelid. A hordeolium is a sty, an acute affection, infection of the sebaceous gland, um, and it is usually due to Staphylococcus aureus. It's um, painful, red, and, um, and um, edematous, so it can cause edema. Um, my mom actually had a chalzian that turned into a sty on her top eyelid and now it's kind of stuck there so um, they have to give her steroids and stuff in it to try to get it down. Okay, conjunctivitis is the inflammation of the papabrol or bulbar conjunctiva. So papabrol is over the eyes, the white of the eyes, the bulbar, bulbar, 
bull bar is the like red cushiony area um, of the conjunctiva, okay? Um, it's a local infection of bacteria or virus. It can be allergic reaction, systematic infection, chemical irritation. It appears red. The eyes appear red, thick, sticky, discharge in the morning. Corneal abrasion or ulcer. Um, so it, you you basically um, have an ulcer in your eye. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it can be caused by um, all sorts of things, fungal, virus, dryness, um, can cause you to not be able to close your eyelid completely, um, can be due to scratches in the eye, poorly fitted contacts, you have intense pain when you have this, um, photophobia, um, and tearing and redness. Strabismus. Um, <clears throat> so that's an abnormal alignment of um, the oculars. So if you push one of your eyes in, you'll notice you're, you'll start seeing in double. Um, and your brain can't process that for long. So um, they like catching this early on in young children because um, at that time, you still have a chance before your brain just shuts off one eye and goes with the dominant eye. So then you'll basically be blind in the second eye. Um, so yeah, uh, strabismus is where it's unequal and they basically see two. Um, Non-paralytic strabismus is um, weakened muscle or difficulty focusing or um, the, and just uh, anatomically, there's differences in the eye. Paralytic strabismus is um, motor imbalance caused by paralysis or of an extraocular muscle. Esotropia is when it moves inward. Exotropia is when it moves outward. Pateri GM, that's when um, you get some conjunctiva growing over your actual iris and pupil. Um, it can be due to excessive sunlight. It's painless, but it can make it seem like something's in your eye. <coughs> Cataracts are um, uh, the crystalline, in the crystalline lens, um, the proteins become more clumped and um, you, you get blurriness in the actual lens. Um, cloudy, blurred vision, diplopia, poor night vision, um, yeah, you get all those. Diabetic retinopathy is the visual alteration due to diabetes mellitus. Um, it is the consequence of hyperglycemia and is the number one cause of um, blindness in Americans. Um, they see macula, um, exudates around the macula, um, yeah, decreased vision, all that good stuff. Glaucoma is increased, um, is increased of the, the vitreous humor in your eyes, so your eyes have too much, um, fluid in them. And um, these guys, uh, it, it can lead to blindness if untreated um, because they just have so much building up. Um, lots of uh, peripheral vision, very firm, um, halo around light. Um, yeah. Ears. Um, form bodies can be in ears. Kids love shoving stuff in their ears. Small stones, insects, part of toys. Um, so watch out for that. Infection of ear. There's a, an acute otis media. Um, that is infection of the middle ear. Um, is very common in childhood. Um, ear pain is ot otalgia. And um, the, the, these ear infections can cause ex fussiness in um, infants. Um, the tympanic membrane appears inflamed, red, bulging, um, what you expect with an infection. 
um, Otis Media with effusion. Um, so that is when you have an infection of the middle ear, but now you're getting accumulations of serous fluid in the middle ear. Um, and you'll hear clicking and popping sounds, and it's very irritated. Um, you get like a clogged sensation. And usually it's very painful until like it pops. Go ahead and watch one of these, um, them draining an ear infection. Um, it's pretty cool. I love it. Um, hearing loss, conductive hearing loss, is caused by inference of air conduction to the middle ear. So, um, yeah, you get muffled hearing. Yeah. Sensor sensory neural hearing loss um, is changes or disorders with the inner ear um, is 90% of hearing loss um, is just atrophy, degeneration, and stiffening of cochlear muscle. Um, yeah. Yep. They, they just really can't hear. Moving on to nose. Um, so conductive hearing loss, it looks like it's blockage, um, and sensorial is like, uh, now the actual hearing parts are so stiff that they can't move vibrations and, um, help you hear. So nose, now we got epitaxis, uh, which is bleeding from the nose. Um, I think we've all had a bloody nose before, sneezing, blunt force can cause it. Um, rhinitis, um, so that's um, like inflammation in the nose um, from allergies. Um, you'll get some drainage. Acute cyanitis is infection of the sinuses. Um, you get pool secretion within the sinuses. Um, yeah, we did the sinus um, test. Uh, you'll uh, you'll notice an absence of the red glow noted. Um, it's tender. Yeah. Mouth. Herpes simplex is um, very contagious. It's in the mouth. Um, it can um, pop back up during sun exposure, cold temperatures, fevers, or allergy season. Um, gingivitis is inflammation of the gums. Um, it's poor um, poor dental hygiene and uh, yeah you get hyperplasia of the gums and erythemia and bleeding. Um, periodontis is inflammation caused by erosion of gums loosening and it can cause loosening of the teeth. Okay um, <clears throat> tonsillitis infection of the tonsils, um, trouble swallowing, adoniophagia, um, lymph node swelling, ear pain, yeah, all that, all that, <laughs> um, can be caused by beta and hemolytic or strepto streptococci bacteria. Moving on, candidus, uh, is, um, caused by candida albations. It's an opportunistic infection. Um, pops up normally in the immunosuppressed or um, those on antibiotics. Um, it's like this whitish, whitish goop plaque um, that appears on tongue and all that. Um, Aphthias ulcer, so a canker sore, most common, 66% um, of the population have it. It's just a um, very painful um, ulcer in your mouth region. Oral cancer. Um, causes of this um, are normally because of tobacco use. Uh, you'll see white and red patches. Um, so leukoplakia, um, erythioplakia. Um, There'll be an enlarged chain of lymph nodes that are um, lo loosening teeth, um, wearing dentures, difficulty swallowing. Hyperthyroidism. Um, 
So this is excess production of thyroid hormone. It's seen in Graves' disease. Um, you can get enlarged thyroid gland, exophthalmus, um, which is your eyes bulging out. Uh, goiter may reveal a brute. Hypothyroidism, now you're getting, um, you're not enough thyroid. You're without enough thyroid, you're getting, um, kind of a little bit chunkier because, uh, thyroid is very important in metabolism processes. Um. But, yeah, you'll get atrophy of thyroid. Um, uh, yeah, decreased metabolism, slow motion, depressed, maybe even a goiter. Um, yeah, thyroid cancer is the most common endocrine cancer. Um, the tumor grows on the thyroid. You have voice problems. Difficulty with swallowing and breathing, invasion of um, esophagus and trachea. Lymphomas are malignant neoplasias of the lymph tissue. Um, they're large, non tender. Um, yeah, they, they just progress and they're painless. Um, okay. And that is it for chapter 10 of health assessment.